in connection with the Golden Jubilee celebrations that uh, are beginning actually this year. September 13th, I believe, was the date that Sri Prabhupada embarked on his voyage, you know, 50 years ago. August. August? Okay, somebody said September, September 13th is an important date. Maybe I would like Yeah. Uh, in any event, uh, devotees are uh, going to reenact in Calcutta, isn't it? Within uh, coming up. And, and uh, <clears throat> it means that the Golden Jubilee period of ISKCON is beginning this year. And uh, this campaign that we are uh, undertaking is, is uh, spearheaded by the two ministries. Mm -hmm. The Ministry for Cow Protection as well, because it is centered on cow. And the purpose is to actually make this, introduce that in all of our different centers and projects around the world, um, both city centers, urban centers, as well as our uh, farm communities, especially farm communities, because um, that is where in, in most communities we have some cows. And although we may have cows, we, are, we still have many things to learn in terms of how to <clears throat> uh, connect with the cows and how to um, uh, build up and develop that. It's actually a cow culture. You know, our very culture is very much a cow, a cow culture, cow-centric culture, uh, <clears throat> a cow dumb economy culture as well <clears throat> and uh, and we are uh, in this way trying to uh, uh, create awareness global awareness <clears throat> it's not only about cows but because it is central as we will see from some of the uh, selected uh, quotes that we will share with you in a few seconds that uh, it it expands and includes actually the entire Vedic culture. So in other words, the campaign is not simply some sentimental uh, propaganda for protecting cows, <laughs> but it's actually a propaganda for introducing the different uh, <clears throat> dimensions that are there, uh, the heart of which is actually Mother Surabi Mother Cow. So, after showing this uh, PowerPoint, <clears throat> as you will see uh, during the PowerPoint also, we are uh, stating what are some of the short-term and long-term goals and objectives of the campaign. And we are looking, we are looking for individuals. Mm, we are in the process of selecting uh, representatives who can be part of the campaign from each continent from each uh, country, from each uh, project as well, etc. So just, you can keep that in mind. We have some literature uh, that, uh, I don't know, I gave copies <coughs> to Mukunda Prabhu a few days back. Uh, I wanted to actually get more copies somehow. Uh, I could not do that, but uh, we'll make those available <coughs> for those who may be interested. And uh, if anyone would like to be at whatever uh, level or in whatever capacity be involved. Uh, it will go till, <clears throat> I believe, the second, or you can probably start showing now, actually. Uh, some of those details are actually part of the PowerPoint, so we can go directly. Yeah. So the campaign is called Om Sri Surabi Campaign from 2015, this year, up until 2027. The actual date, yeah, the actual date is November, uh, I believe the 5th, 2027, which will mark actually Sri Prabhupada's 
uh, <clears throat> last day, I mean 50 years after, right? <clears throat> so, as I mentioned, it's an initiative from these two ministries. The second one, we just press from the Ministry for Cow Protection uh, in India. Uh, so in many ways, because we also mentioned this, uh, ISKCON does not yet have a global ministry for Varashram. So we're kind of like going a little ahead, you know, taking a step um, ahead of ourselves, as they say, to um, <coughs> uh, promote the ideology. But it is also connected with this other endeavor, global community I mentioned about, sustainable Vaishnav communities. <clears throat> Next. So this is the content of the presentation here. Uh, some of the very important quotes uh, by Sri Prabhupada and uh, a brief summary of the mandate that our ministry has in India. What are some of the short-term objectives, then long-term objectives, some fundraising, nationally will be involved, uh, fund allocation, and uh, <clears throat> who are some of the uh, already selected uh, coordinators for different continents, yeah. Is there a name? I think not. Next, there is, yeah, websites. <laughs> We've already mentioned about that. We can go right away to <clears throat> very, yeah. This Krishna consciousness movement is for the protection of Brahminical culture and cows. Then automatically the peace of the world will come if these two things are done. This is Vedic literature. <laughs> They pick up the essence of the things and all other things follow. Two points, actually. The first one we all know about, uh, actually there are three things here. The importance of cows and uh, brahmanas, number one. <coughs> number two, um, <coughs> yeah, that the state of the world is very much connected with our uh, success in giving proper care and protection to the cows and the brahmanas. And then the last point the Prophet mentioned is that from one thing, so many uh, <coughs> important aspects are, are, are uh, within that, that one thing. So the more we understand, in other words, about cows, and how they are so relevant in so many ways when we begin to live a more natural lifestyle, then we will, you know, ask ourselves, my God, why did I not think about this or why did I not act on this way before? You know? Next quote from Sri Prabhupada. <clears throat> the bull is the emblem of the moral principle and the cow is the representative of the earth. Yeah. Next. The killing of cows by human society is one of the grossest suicidal pol policies. And those who are anxious to cultivate the human spirit must turn their attention first toward the question of cow protection. Very powerful message given by Sri Prabhupada that uh, in a letter actually written in 1968 at that time to uh, I believe uh, Kirtan Ananda, the letter was stating that um, our cities in Europe and our cities in the West will one day soon be destroyed because of the killing of cows. <clears throat> Ordinary people don't know, uh, and we tend to forget also the bodies that this is the most simple activity for which we can expect heavy, heavy, heavy reaction. Unimaginable, actually. I mean, Shastra is telling, right, the killing of one cow, for as many hairs on the body of that cow, whoever is responsible for killing has to take birth. And every day there are hundreds I mean, over 200,000 cows, I believe, in India alone, every day. 
So, <clears throat> this is very, uh, Prabhupada mentions this word must turn their attention first. Prabhupada is telling that to us right now. <clears throat> and we'll come up in a few seconds with a very major uh, quotation from another source underlining the importance of giving priority, first attention to this problem that we have in society today. Next. Therefore, the world is suffering so much sinful activities. The greatest sinful activity is cow slaughter and they are committing. They do not know what will be the result. Such brain still bound brain. <laughs> Thorough order Overhaul is required that we are doing, otherwise this tool cannot be cleansed. So in another place, Papa mentions about uh, one of the purposes of our ISKCON society is to bring a complete overhaul, a complete overhaul within society. Next, I think the last, yeah, that's the verse, <laughs> actually. There should be a thorough overhauling uh, of society and revert, Robert is very clear and direct, revert to the Vedic principles, the Vedic way of life. Yeah. And from another source, a last quote here, next. Tratavya pratamam agava tratta trayanti ta dujan go brahmana paritrane paritratam jagat bhagat. The first translation, the first section rather. First of all, cows should be protected. Cows thus protected will in turn protect the brahmanas. And the last section. Thus, when protection of cows and brahmanas is achieved, then the whole world is protected. You can give the quotation from the Harivamsa Parva, 55 to Rivali. There are many purports given by Srila Prabhupada where he explains, isn't it, the intimate connection, link between cows, cows that sustain the Brahminical culture, and in turn, Brahminical culture allows us to become self-realized, isn't it? <clears throat> and therefore, that's why cows are so dear to Krishna. They are more dear to Krishna than the Brahmanas, because the Brahmanas cannot do anything without the cows. Now when we live the way we are in modern day society where we don't utilize the cows, we, don't, we, we think we can do without the cows, but actually uh, we are making a royal mess of the whole you know, planet <laughs> because we're living uh, basically following principles of dharma. So when we means it's a deviation. means that modern day you know, urbanization, which is taking us away basically, I mean, literally speaking, from our roots at all levels, huh, uh, it's a deviation. And we need to, as devotees, we need to understand this very clearly and how it's actually affecting our individual life, the lives of our, of our family and general society as well. And therefore, present day direction from the different leaders all over the world, it is adhamic and highly dangerous. That's why you'll see the video actually, some uh, Srila Prabhupada will be speaking to us uh, on this very same subject matter. And uh, Srila Prabhupada uh, naturally very <clears throat> forceful in expressing uh, how uh, <clears throat> sinful and, and how uh, very horrifying the present situation is and how we as a society that is part of our mandate, so to speak, to bring about correction. Not only, in other words, should we be instructing people to chant the holy name? That's the beginning, actually. Because without purified intelligence, without purified consciousness, people will not understand these things, isn't it? 
Prabhupada did mention, right, those who are meat eaters, they're too covered. <laughs> they, can under, they cannot understand you know, the more subtle, you know, the, 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 the fine <clears throat> uh, values that are hidden, that are concealed you know, within our Vedic culture, within our Vedic lifestyle. It's like, you know, like washing our hands after eating or before eating. <laughs> basic things, I mean, basic are just not even there in modern day society. Uh, next, yes. This is the mandate that we have actually, just briefly, this is uh, uh, given maybe when we established the ministry, <coughs> when the leaders in India established the ministry, to encourage the establishment in India, because it's, it's a ministry for India, uh, of models of Krishna conscious rural communities, means villages, A, to demonstrate in a practical way how the principles of varnas, aptitude-based occupations, and asramas, phase lifelong spiritual emancipation, are universal and standard principles meant to be implemented. B, to demonstrate the principles of self-sufficiency, sustainability, and localized economy based on proper utilization of land and cow protection. So this is touching on artha and kama, right? The four basic means, dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. Next, I believe, two, <clears throat> to encourage, wherever possible in India, varnashram based rural development centered on the land, cows, and Krishna. That's our formula, cows, land, and Krishna. And three, in order to accomplish the above, to establish training programs, publish resource materials, organize conferences and seminars, establish libraries and resource centers, etc. <clears throat> what are some of the short-term objectives? <clears throat> yeah, you can go down. Uh, personal oath, family practices. Uh, in other words, there's something for everyone, for individuals, for family, for temples, for uh, something about ahimsa milk is there also. Uh, the importance of cooking and ghee. This is especially important for Matajis. Uh, important for temples and also important, actually important for everybody. Huh? That uh, <clears throat> we understand why it is so important to actually cook in ghee number six. Uh, we have programs, uh, detailed programs about uh, adopting a cow, about adopting a village also. Next. No. There might be, okay. So personal oath, we've been going around and, and because it takes a little bit of time to do that, but uh, the Om Sri Sarabhi campaign gives an opportunity for individuals to take a lifelong pledge to always protect a mother cow. We actually have uh, an actual pledge that um, should be printed very soon to allow for that. A standard pledge can be taken any time, especially if any official local launching ceremony of the campaign. We are encouraging, um, <clears throat> in other words, uh, this first year of the campaign, <clears throat> is like um, uh, working on the foundation, on the, 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 the basics, which gradually we are uh, wanting to introduce. Yeah, we can go to the next family practices. Here's something that immediately uh, you as individuals and uh, as a family can, can start doing. Uh, we have this uh, Suryabhi Mantra, which is basically this mantra we are reciting. Uh, to glorify Mother Cow, to have cow photos on the altar and walls. Already some of the boys have this. To use cow products such as natural soaps and incense. We were demonstrating that, showing that the other day, yesterday. To daily recite some prayers, glorifying Mother Sarami. Go Seva, to visit or to do service in a nearby Goshala. Mm -hmm. This for, yeah, especially for people in the, in, in the cities and uh, to perform Go Puja. Today we offer incense and flowers uh, to Mother Sulebi. Uh, in our village in uh, Indonesia, every, for example, I believe the in Gorpunima, they have, because they have cows there, they do Go Puja. Here we have cows also. And, you know, nice practice, uh, just like for the opening of the uh, Scandinavian Bhakti Sangam, we had a cow. Yes. Isn't it? And it just it makes the presence of cow just makes everything auspicious. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Brahmanas, priests, most uh, often recommend to donate a cow to offset anything inauspicious. Just before I came here, I, I, I was coming from Montreal, and uh, <clears throat> one of my disciples, um, Indian family, their daughter was getting married. And because something was not quite correct in the horoscope, the Purohit was telling, you should uh, give a cow, you know, <laughs> the donation, to counteract <clears throat> that inauspicious. So then she was asking me, <clears throat> where can I donate a cow? <laughs> <laughs> so then I was calling India, uh, <clears throat> because it had to be a white cow, a deshi cow, <laughs> pure cow, pure breed cow like that. So cows are extremely, I have so many wonderful stories are there. Uh, I don't know if some of you saw, there's a small book called Sacred Cow from Vrindavan. It's a wonderful book that has uh, all kinds of, uh, it's taken from different shastras actually. And uh, not a big book, but it's full of wonderful prayers um, and very instructive as well. <clears throat> so these are some you know, practical things that can be done and that should be done to uh, increase our understanding and awareness of the importance of Mother Karen and that will automatically purify uh, our home, uh, our consciousness, etc. Next. For our city temples, yeah, we're recommending that the whole seminar is promoting health, yoga, and diet um, <clears throat> to introduce, uh, yeah, community gardens, uh, close to our temples, to lease or purchase land for the purpose of maintaining cows and eventually developing a rural community, to encourage devotees and congregation members to use Pantsagavya natural products such as soaps, and incense, etc. Same kind of idea. And to organize yearly festivals sharing developments on sustainability among temples, something that actually here in Europe Europe has been ahead of the game, so to speak, by organizing for the last uh, so many years uh, under the guidance of uh, Shana Shindra Prabhu, uh, farm conferences. So as a result of that, uh, some of our devotees in different parts of the world now in India are organizing their first national farm conference coming up, um, I believe next month, at the uh, Nilachal Dham uh, uh, farm project, which is under Juhu. <laughs> Uh, close to uh, maybe 60 kilometers from Mumbai. This will be their first national farm conference. And actually in every continent we should be having, uh, so that in this way, uh, some of our devotees from the cities can also get some exposure. Next, okay, last, to develop curriculum design, yeah, for homeschooling, traditional guru kulas, and varnasam colors. We're working on that. We made a short presentation the other day regarding uh, Varnashram curriculum. Next. Okay. That's also something that you can begin even now, actually. Whether you are in the city or in the country, uh, Varnashram research teams, uh, <clears throat> it just means people coming together, devotees who are specifically interested in, in uh, learning more about what are the implications and uh, there's a lot of research actually that is needed uh, at so many different levels and uh, this facilitates this kind of uh, uh, research work. Next. Actually the goal is uh, regarding hemp and milk sometimes it's a little controversial to discuss on the point but it's actually most important, the body should take milk only for protected cows. That should be our goal, our objective. Protected cows means those cows that we know for certain will not be sent to the slaughterhouse. And we should add, we are taken care of by devotees. Therefore, the importance of temples to have a farm project, as Papa told us so many years ago, and for devotees to be connected with cows. The body should also take a2 category milk and not A1 category milk that is harmful to one's health. I won't get into, huh? Okay, well, I will explain and take only two minutes and I won't go beyond that. But 